of me. Defending! Not just by debate. We don't defend our rights by debate. That's where we start in some cases. Defending life and liberty, acquiring, possessing, and protecting, not just with squirt guns and powder puffs, <laughs> our property. Let me read this again because it has several points. All men have certain natural, essential, inherent rights among which are the enjoying and defending life, liberty, acquiring, possessing, and protecting property. Even our property, right? In a word, of seeking and obtaining happiness. Equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by this state on account of race, creed, color, and that also, or national origin, as long as citizens, except for foreign invaders and illegal aliens. Hello? No! In Article 2A, the bearing of arms, all persons have the right to keep and bear arms in defense of themselves, their families, their property, and their state. And that was ratified even as recently as December 1st, 1984. So if you say, wait a minute, this preacher, Garrett Lear, got up there dressed in funny clothes, and he started telling us as Christians that we have the right to do these things, that we have the duty to do these things, where's this guy getting it from? I got it from the Bible. I got it from our Constitution. Nationally, I got it from our Constitution in the state of New Hampshire. I didn't make these things up. I have read them to you in the original source documents. Mm -hmm. So to possess and use as power, to exercise, as to bear sway. That's the Noah Webster's 1828 dictionary definition of bearing arms. To carry, to convey, to support, to remove from place to place as they bear him upon the shoulder. The eagle beareth them on her wings. So in other words, as we're told, okay, yeah, you can go hunting. You can have a gun to go hunting. That's it. Or you can have a gun in your house, but you can't carry that gun with you for your protection. That's not what they were saying in this Constitution at all. And I want you to know something. There are some people, and I speak at a lot of patriot organization meetings and tea parties all over the country. I do not worship the Second Amendment. I don't worship the Declaration of American Independence. Right. I don't worship the Constitution of the United States. I don't worship the Constitution of the state of New Hampshire. Right. I worship the King of Kings. Amen. Amen. And the Lord of Lords. And I owe my allegiance to him. And by the way, I never tell anyone I am a servant of the people. That may shock you. I am a servant of the Lord in service to the people, and it's my responsibility to speak what the Lord has told me to speak, mm -hmm. and as he has in his word. And yes. this morning in our flagpole devotion, praise God for the young lady that read from John chapter 14, verse 6, that Jesus is the way, yes. the truth, and the life, and that no man cometh to the Father except by the Son. Uh -huh. That is what our founding fathers believed. And it was also up on Reverend Kraft's uh, slideshow there. 2 Corinthians 3.17 Now the Lord is the Spirit. Is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now before I take a few minutes to take questions, I want to mention to you that there's been a lot, as I'm sure you're aware, in the news recently concerning, for example, the recent case, which was called McDonald versus Chicago, just decided June 29, 2010 which the Supreme Court ruled Monday that all Americans have the right to own guns for self-defense. Now we praise God for his victory in that, standing against that law in Chicago. We'll see where that goes, but I want you to know what Mr. McDonald said that didn't get reported in the news. Mr. McDonald said, I would like first to give thanks to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for giving me the endurance to be where I am today. Right. Right. Come on. This man fought that battle and endured through that battle and the expense, and by the way, it's very expensive to do things like that. He did it because he knows that he has unalienable rights yes. from his creator, and one of them is to self-defend. The liberals want to destroy our Second Amendment rights so they can live out their fantasy of a global gun ban. Mm. And I'll tell you what a horror that will be. Mm -hmm. And they will die by their own sword. You know, if 
many of you don't perhaps have put a whole lot or haven't put a whole lot of study into the French Revolution. But one of the points that I bring out to a lot of people is Robespierre, who was the architect of the French Revolution, that godless atheistic uh, output, ended up dying on the very thing that he and Dr. Guillotine invented called a guillotine. Mm. Robespierre died on his own guillotine. That's what happens when chaos and godless atheism takes over. Mm. Recently, one of our governors in Louisiana, Louisiana's in the news, that was Governor Bobby Jindal, has agreed to allow, thank you Bobby, concealed handguns in, inside Louisiana's churches. My son-in-law, who's a pastor in Tennessee, keeps a 45 under the pulpit. Wow. Wow. In Knoxville, Tennessee, there have been churches invaded during service and yes. people have been killed in right. the church. In church. What's up with that? Does anyone see anything wrong with that? I see something very wrong with that. Hey, we just got together. We're not bothering you. We're out there praising the Lord and you think you can come in and slaughter us? That that's okay? That the Lord wants us to stand there and be slaughtered? I don't believe so. I believe the scripture and our history speaks against that. Yep. Now we know that certain opponents argue, and there are many peacenik people, and of course throughout our history in America we've had the Amish, the Mennonites, the Quakers, and a variety of others that have basically been pacifists. I mean no disrespect to any of them when I tell you this, because I have great admiration for all of those groups and have ministered over the years in those groups, but I find it very disingenuous for them to say that they would not protect themselves, yet they pay somebody to protect them. Mm. They'll pay soldiers, they'll pay police, but they won't gather up a gun and defend themselves and their family and their property. And I think that's a mistake and I think it's enterprised on. You see, the problem that most of us have, I suppose, I wake up every single morning of my life and I praise the Lord first thing when I open my eyes and I thank the Lord and I look around and see the beauty of His handiwork. Amen. I mean no harm to anybody. I have no desire to steal from somebody. I have no desire to take anything that anybody has. I don't have any desire to control anybody. I have no desire to be a tyrant or any of those such things. But it's obvious that there are a lot of people that every morning that they wake up, that's the first thing that comes to their mind, that they want to control Garrett Lear. And I want to tell you something. On behalf of myself and my ancestry, I will not be dominated by any man. Right. Amen. And it's not a statement of pride. You see, the Lord said you can either serve mammon or you can serve me, but you can't serve both. So serving mammon is serving man. Right. And the will of a status society, the government says, we're God. And by the way, either God will be your government, or government will be your God. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I mean, it's, the choices are like that. Right. So we see that the UN, and you know that you've been reading about some of these things, that the UN wants to make all firearms subject to international law. And this morning, Mr. Shirtliff talked about the issue of treaties. The Small Arms and Light Weapons Program of Action will prohibit firearm and ammunition manufacturers from selling to the public, prohibit any transfer or fi of firearm ownership, require U.S. citizens to deliver any firearm they own to the local government collection and destruction center or face imprisonment. Ooh. All of those things that I just read to you that the UN wants to do are certainly unbiblical, and they're certainly unconstitutional, and I'm not going to go with them. I'll take a question in a minute, thank you. I also want to mention a gun case years ago, where a logical sequel to the court's five to four decision in District of Columbia versus Heller, that decision established for the first time that the Second Amendment's right to keep and bear arms referred to an individual right. Hello. Not one related to military service, but the decision that there is a right to keep a gun in one's home did not extend beyond the federal government and its enclaves such as Washington. Justice Alito wrote the conservative opinion for the court. It's clear that the framers counted the right to keep and bear arms among those fundamental rights necessary to our system of ordered liberty. I think he really didn't cover it quite as well as he needed to, but considering what we deal with, that's one of the things. And I'm going to take your question in just a moment. One more 
bit of news worthy because this came in just the other day. Los Angeles police say a nine-year-old boy playing with a loaded gun accidentally shot and killed his two-year-old brother. Police said in a statement Saturday that officers and paramedics found the toddler with a bullet wound in his torso after they were called to the boy's home in San Fernando Valley. Police say the two-year-old died at the hospital Friday night. You see, people read that immediately, a knee-jerk reaction. You see, we've got to get rid of guns. We've got to get guns out of people's hands. You see how that child killed another child with a gun? It wasn't the gun that killed the child. The nine-year-old, in whatever way that he was able to have a loaded gun in his hand, is still not the reason for us to have our rights taken away. So you see how the news media heads that up. But I want to leave this with you before we take our questions. It is your God-given right to defend yourself, but it's also your duty. Congress of Massachusetts, I should say the legislature of Massachusetts in 1774, went so far as to say, this is before Thomas Jefferson said that quote that I gave you about guns and resisting government, tyranny, they said that resisting tyranny becomes the Christian. This is not something that comes naturally to us, because naturally we don't stand against anything. Right. But supernaturally we do, and we need to, ever more so now. Because I believe that the enemies of freedom and liberty who want to tyrannize us will use every mean to enslave us. And I am not going to stand by and let anyone do that. And I simply make this statement. Someone has stolen my country. And I want her back. And I want her back now. Right. Now we have